be talking about the Tetrastigma voinerianum, the chestnut vine. The chestnut vine is native to the general region of Vietnam. In the wild, you'd find this growing in forest understories and then climbing up through the canopy of rainforest. So it's in the Vitaceae or grape family. We have a lot of native plants in that family in this area. So one you might be familiar with is the Virginia creeper, Parthenocystis quinquefolia. So when you first look at this plant, it may not look very interesting or very unusual at first glance, but it has some very unique interactions with the habitat and other plants around it. And that is the host plant for the Rafflesia arnoldii, which is the world's largest single flower and happens to be a holoparasite that needs this plant to be able to survive. So this plant, the chestnut vine, is a flowering plant. It will produce small green flowers that aren't very significant, look very similar to a grape flower or Virginia creeper flower. So when the tetrastigma flowers, it really doesn't have much of a scent at all. But its relationship to the Rafflesia, when that Rafflesia will flower, that plant itself smells like a dead body. The tetrastigma, when it flowers, will be pollinated by flies and small beetles, um, nothing terribly exciting. However, the Rafflesia, that will be carrying flies, um, beetles that would be attracted to lay eggs in rotting flesh, a whole different subset of insects. So the plant that will live inside this, the Rafflesia, is an endangered species, mostly due to habitat loss as well as ecotourism. So if you're really interested in the Rafflesia and want to grow something that reminds you of or can tell a story, you can actually grow a tetrastigma in your house fairly easily. It makes a really good house plant. It'll tolerate low light. It does prefer relatively high humidity levels, so that would be something to keep in mind. So while the host plant, the tetrastigma, is relatively easy to care for, the Rafflesia is a whole different story. It's still being worked out how the Rafflesia will actually parasitize its host, um, how that goes from seed to actually being inside the plant. Um, so there's still a lot of studies on that and it hasn't been done successfully um, and it's not being published because they don't want everyone else going out and collecting seed and potentially threatening this endangered species.